Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Mad City is kind of one of those like budget titles that you would purchase. I think it's fine for that. It has a very well known game designer on the box, which will lead you in, but the artwork on the box is a little off-putting for me. It's a little weird, but when you sit down to play, what you're going to find is a timed game. Yes, it's a real timed game. So you're going to be given these tiles, and you can put them any way you want. There's no rules to connection. There will be scoring rules and benefits to scoring them in a certain way, but you can literally put any tile by anything that you want. You're just going to score less points for doing so. And how do I want to maximize my score as you're going through? That game has a basic and an advanced. Both have their pluses and minuses to it. So for the basic game, I feel like it's a very easier game to jump into, of course. I think it's probably the most pure game as you're going through, and I think it's a lot easier to teach, and the scoring is already wonky in the game. I don't need to be even wonkier. Now, the advance is going to give you a lot more to think about, obviously, and, and how you have to turn those tiles before you can physically score them. That might play into your decision-making as you're going through. I don't really need the advance. I think the basic was fine, especially if you're going to play with younger gamers. I think it's fine as you're going through. I think the game is a little hard to understand scoring. The scoring is a little wonky. I think that if you're playing this as a casual game, I think people are going to struggle at first. How does this actually score? And you almost want to get through a game and show some examples of scoring. People ah, I got it. Let's do this again now that I know what I'm doing. I think it's one of those. It's okay. The components are okay. The graphic design is below average. It doesn't look very good. It looked like somebody wanted to put a well-known designer on a box but didn't want to put the money into the production of it. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's okay. It's probably a reason why you never heard of it. But if you want a real time tile laying game that has, you know, some unique scoring about how you put those tiles together, how am I going to score these points? It's almost like a puzzle. This would be it. For me, it's going to be a purge. It's not going to be something that I found myself pulling back to the table. I can get this elsewhere and enjoy it more. It just wasn't something for me. But do not let the real time scare you off. You can play with it. You cannot play with it. Whatever you want to do. It's not a core mechanism of the game, although it's there to keep the game moving so you're not just min-maxing all the time and to have a finite amount of time that you're going to play it. For me, it's a purge, but I think it's something that you might want to take a look at. If it sounds interesting, I think you might like it. Here's Mad City. You can see, for some reason, a raccoon and a squirrel is building a city on the front. You're going to have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. You have a very nice bag. Love this bag because my hand can actually fit into it and get the tiles. The tiles are pretty thick, pretty good quality. Say Matt City on the back. Eh, a little bit generic on the front here, I guess. Yeah, not crazy about it. But you do need to be able to see the icons and stuff as you're playing. You're going to have some scoring tiles, etc. You'll be utilizing everything in really good condition. You're going to have a sand timer, which you'll probably never use because you'll use your app instead. You're going to have some little wooden markers here. In particular, the one... With the tree, it's kind of neat that you'll see here in a little bit of a shape. And then you're going to have your standard boards. Eh, they look kind of like a mess, I'll be honest. You're going to have uh, double-sided for the base game. A lot of information, a lot of scoring on these. I mean, they're good quality, but but this design is just a mess. I think if this game was ever re-released, you'd see a lot of these components cleaned up. So here's the rule book. You can see a picture of all the components on the front, which is nice. You're going to have the base game. This rule book is just a mess. I hate the organization of it. You see little charts everywhere, lots of different colors, pictures. And here is scoring over here. And then you have the standard game, which is in addition to the base game. Uh, you got the variants for two-player extra tiles. There's a solitaire here. I just found this book to kind of be a mess. The game isn't very hard to pick up, but the rule book is a challenge. It does make it a little bit harder. And I don't know what's, what's the real game. Is it the base game or the standard game? If you said advanced game, I would know, hey, this is probably, you know, but base and standard? I don't know. Weird, right? So that's your rule book. So for the base game, you're going to have your sand timer ready to go. You're going to have the tree in the middle. You're going to have your board set on base game and your little marker here on zero. Then everybody's going to draw nine tiles randomly from the bag. So you're going to have your nine tiles. You're going to flip the timer over and start. Everybody's going to have a fun amount of time to build your city. And you can literally build it however you see fit. It literally doesn't matter for the rules now it will matter for scoring right you're going to want certain things to happen etc so we'll kind of go through that i'll show you how scoring works but for the most part there are no restrictions on how you build your city 
Now, when you're done building, if you're before the timer's run out, if you want to grab the park ranger tree, you can. But once you grab this, you can make no more changes to your park. You have already grabbed this. So there's going to be five different areas in the board. Yellow, blue, red, green, and water. There's going to be five areas that you'll be scoring as the game continues. Now, the yellow, you're going to get three to... Which if you have three to six buildings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, two... Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's all of these through here. Uh, which will be 13 plus will score me five points, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, five points. The reds, uh, you have one, two, three that are connected here. That will give me two points. Uh, these two up here will give me two points, and the one by itself will give me nothing. And then the blues, I don't have anything there. So if you look here on your scoring sheet, you're going to see. You know, if you had zero to two of the yellows, you get zero points. Zero to one, zero points. And there'll be a chart here, and you just kind of score those out and track your points around here. Then what you do is count the longest road. So count the tiles. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. Then it's my longest road. One, two, three. Yeah, so five. Whoever has the longest road will score an additional three bonus points. Now, if you did happen to grab this, you would then score points for your park and your lakes. And the number that you have will be how many points that you get right here. Uh, only one person's able to grab this park ranger tree, but if it was you, you're going to score for your parks and your lakes. You continue to do this until somebody scores 150 points, and then you determine your winner by most points. Now, the, the, the standard game, which I'm not going to go into too much, will include these tiles that you're going to see here. And basically what they're going to do is, is you're not going to score. So here it says 2 to 4 on blue. You're not going to score, start scoring those until you can turn this after you've done it enough times. Um, so on this one, you want two to five on the reds, and you'll turn this each time. And on the back, you'll score two to five points. Uh, for two to five, you'll score two points. So it kind of gives you a countdown. I personally like the base game a little bit better. I think this is convoluted and just kind of a mess. Uh, and this is harder to explain to people. I think this base game is enough for what I was trying to get out of it. Who should buy this game? Uh, I've said it before, but don't let the real time scare you off. That's, that's fine. It, it, you can play with it or not play with it. The game will just take longer if you play without it. As for the tiling, I think it's very interesting because every time you play the tiles, it's like there, there are different options that you have. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Yeah, this could score me that many points. It could score that many points. But you have the time condensing you down. Ah, I got to move. I got to move. What do you want to do? What's in your best interest? And the advanced and the basic mode gives you different variants to play with. I think both add something to the game, although they are kind of similar in a lot of respects. Uh, that's okay. So while it's a purge for me, not something I was bringing back to the table, it's not really a game that I would enjoy. I definitely think there's something here, and you almost want to see a better production of this game. But for me, it's going to be a purge. Uh, if you like it, get it. Uh, I don't know if I would say it was for non-gamers, but it's definitely an experience that I think non-gamers could play. I think the scoring may just be a little scary for them at first.